We talk Ohio State football each and every Wednesday night with uh, Brandon Zimmerman from the Ozone.net. Join him there, definitely. It's also bzimmerman9 uh, on Twitter. All right. We talk Ohio State football, but by extension, we go Big Ten. And Brandon wrote an article this week uh, listing his top five quarterbacks in the Big Ten. And I, I would consider this to be, and this is just uh, not doing much research on it at all, um, but thinking back over the last five to 10 years, that it's been kind of a down position in the Big Ten. And one of the issues with the Big Ten up until the last few years when the league has, has risen and challenged the elite. Uh, but there was a time there where uh, the, the quarterback play wasn't real deep compared to some other leagues, specifically the Pac-12 and the ACC have been really good at times. But um, we I, again, we've got a cast of characters that uh, aren't great, but I think we've got five pretty proven guys. And then beyond that, a lot of a lot of speculation. Wes Lunt from Illinois moves on. He had a decent career with the Illini. Uh, uh, Armstrong with Nebraska, Tommy Armstrong, spotty career, not really a quarterback, kind of a running back at quarterback, but made a lot of plays, threw a lot of picks. He's gone. Uh, Matt Leidner, for as much as he appeared to be uh, not necessarily a dynamic player, actually getting some play in NFL camps uh, as as he was selected and, and uh, could could find himself in the league uh, for, a, for a while. And uh, Jake Rudock uh, from Iowa was a really good player, beat up in the bowl game against Florida, uh, but uh, finished off his career with a win against the Michigan late in the season. So going into 2017, Brandon, uh, who do you like? My top, Well, um, as you mentioned, the – I think the Big Ten with the quarterbacks right now, and I think it's really a lot of conferences are kind of set up like this where I, I feel like they've got a few really good college um, quarterbacks that probably won't be very good pros. Um, it's just the kind of style that the Big Ten's running right now. I, I don't think you've got very middle, many guys that'll be um, NFL starters someday. Um, as far as top five quarterbacks, Big Ten this year going into the season, uh, number one, I've got JT Barrett. Um, I know like there is nobody that has more controversy surrounding his starting job than JT Barrett. But um, when you think about like what he's done, um, he's he's had such a great career for the Buckeyes that – even if he would have left this year, he, he would go down as stats wise, one of the best quarterbacks to ever play at Ohio state um, for him to come back for another year. That is just really good for him. Um, last year combined for 3,400 yards, 33 touchdowns uh, for his career. He is over, or he's at 100 um, touchdowns over 9,000 yards. Uh, I think he's 24 and six for his uh, career um, with the Buckeyes. And that's starting kind of two and a half years or so. Um, last year, he was silver uh, football co-winner with uh, Saquon Barkley. He was the uh, Big Ten quarterback of, of the year last year, his second time winning the award. So um, while JT Barrett struggled really bad down, down the stretch last year, I think going into this year, he still has to be considered that top quarterback for the Big Ten. Uh, but there are definitely some guys that are kind of nipping at, at his heel for that number one spot. Hey, Brandon, before I let you finish uh, two through five, a uh, couple quick things here. So one would be, and we talked about this before we came on, but uh, I, I find it interesting how people build lists and fans love top five, top ten lists. And that's one of the reasons why we do them. Uh, so my prime example is the Tom Brady example. Tom Brady, I believe, is the best or the second best quarterback in the NFL, Aaron Rodgers being the other. So if you take Tom Brady and throw him on the worst offense in the NFL, his stats are going to suffer immensely. Um, yeah, is he going to lift up that offense? Yes, but he's going to suffer. Uh, is he still, in my eyes, the best or second best quarterback in the NFL? Yes, and I would try to be able to weed through that and be able to see that still. Um, but some people rate these players based on supporting cast and the help that they're given to accumulate stats to justify the season. So the best quarterback may not 
supply the best stats. The fifth best quarterback might have great wide receivers and a great line and produce the best numbers. So I'm just getting your thoughts. Is this a list in terms of who you purely think are the five best quarterbacks, one through five, or are somewhat supported by um, other units that will enable them to produce the five best seasons? I think with mine, um, it's really who I consider the five best um, the best um, quarterbacks going into the uh, season, regardless, like you said, where they are um, playing at. Um, JT Barrett's a prime example of that, where if you look just purely stats wise, JT Barrett's far from, you know, the best, best stats quarterback in the Big Ten. Um, what sets JT Barrett apart is, you know, his uh, leadership skills, um, his proven ability to provide a big play in clutch uh, situations. So I think about stats some. Um, I mean, stats play a role in it, but having the most passing yards, having the most touchdowns do does not automatically make you the best quarterback in my mind. Otherwise, you're going to have guys like Richard Legau and David Blau up there ranked one or two because they throw the ball 600 times a season where someone like JT Barrett's only throwing about 350 or so. So I think you really, when you, when you make up these lists, you've, you've got to come up with a good balance between stats and actually watching the, the players play games and spending time on Saturday to watch them throw um, and look at some of the guys and see how much their supporting cast does kind of inflate their stats um, and how much of it is just, you know, they are really good uh, quarterbacks. Okay, so uh, let's go with number two, and you can carry us on through the rest of the five. So no, number two was a hard one for me. Um, I threw uh, Trace McSorley here. Uh, he's on a lot of people's preseason Heisman lists. He's on, uh, um, you know, a lot of first-team All Big Tens. Uh, Stats-wise, Trace McSorley had a great year last year. Um, through for or he uh, combined for 3,976 yards, 36 touchdowns. Um, he's one of those guys where, you know, stats don't always tell the whole story. I know um, I watched a lot of Penn State games last year, uh, and I, I really think that Penn State last year was set up for a guy like Mick Sorley. Uh, they had Chris Godwin, who's one of those – wide receivers that are able to go up and get almost every 50 50 ball which is hard to uh, come by the the buckeyes had that a few years ago with uh devin smith um last year trace mcsorley kind of had that with chris godwin um and if you watch mcsorley play a lot of his throws downfield were kind of 50 50 balls it seemed like most of his throws he was just kind of chucking up there it worked for him um I really don't think he has that support this year to do the same thing. So he's going to have to make giant strides to kind of be more deliberate with his throws. Um, I think McSorley is going to have a very good year. I think Penn State is going to have a pretty good team. Um, but I think it would be pretty unrealistic for anyone to really think that McSorley is going to put up almost 4,000 yards again, um, almost 40 touchdowns. Um, but I threw him into that second spot because I just really couldn't justify anyone else. It kind of shows for the lack of the really high-end depth of the uh, Big Ten that um, I really don't have too many nice things to say about Trace uh, McSorley as a quarterback. Um, he's fun to watch. I mean, he was fun to watch last year except for when he beat the uh, Buckeyes. But um, Come on, Brandon. You don't like the home run call? You don't like the no. – <laughs> no, no, no. But Watch uh, it go. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's going to be interesting to see what he does this year. But there was really nobody that I could justify sliding into that spot. Uh, my number three guy came close. Um, big fan of his. He's not He's not really a name that many people around the nation will know. He plays for a smaller school. It's not really known for football. Well, small for Big Ten standards. Uh, but uh, the next guy is uh, Clayton Thorson. Um, you know, I 
forced myself to watch Northwestern games last year a, a few times. They're not exactly the most fun team to watch. Um, they had some exciting guys last year like um, Austin Carr and Justin Jackson uh, going in there with uh, Clayton Thorson. So the, the offense was fun at times. Uh, they're just very, you know, it's one of the basic type of um, offenses that the Big Ten has. Thorson went on to throw for over 3,000 yards, 27 touchdowns, only nine picks. So, um, you know, Thorson, I think, is primed to kind of get more national um, exposure this year as a, a junior. Uh, he was a sophomore last year, had, had a great season and a pretty good uh, conference last year. I think as a junior, Thorson's going to have a really good season. He loses um, Austin Carr, which is going to hurt. I, I think Austin Carr caught something like 115 passes last year. Or so, um, but they do have Justin Jackson back. They got Garrett uh, Dickerson coming back in, in, in the uh, in the uh, split back role. So he's going to have the weapons on the um, on the offensive side of the ball to help him. Uh, but they're really going to have to find someone to take up Austin Carr's spot there. Uh, number four uh, went with guy that, you know, from reading around on Twitter and reading, um, I feel like I'm a lot higher on him than maybe other people are. Uh, I guess I'm supposed to hate him because he plays for uh, Michigan, but uh, Wilton Spate is coming in at number four on my list. Last year threw for over 2,500 yards and 19 touchdowns. Um, I feel like w Wilton Spate showed a lot of potential last year to make a big step this year into, you know, jumping up pretty high on this list. Um, I was really impressed with his game against the Buckeyes last year where he had the shoulder, um, injury, the, the, the Buckeye defense just kept on nailing him play after play, uh, still was able to stand in the pocket and deliver some pretty good throws. Uh, I mean, he looked a lot better than JT Barrett th throwing the ball on that day uh, from somebody sitting right there in the stands. Um, his timing, his trust of his uh, wide of his wide receivers were just perfect. Um, he was throwing the ball before the wide receivers were coming out of their routes. Um, big thing with Wilton Spate that he needs to work on this year is his consistency. Um, as good as he looked like against the Buckeyes, he would have a really bad game. Um, and really, if you're looking at it just stats wise, his final uh, three of his final four games, he just really struggled. Where like in, in those three games, he only combined for 400 something yards passing and four uh, picks. So um, Wilton Spate, I think with another year under Harbaugh, who I guess I'm supposed to hate too, but he's a good quarterback coach. Um, I think Spate has the potential to have a pretty good season this year. Uh, but just kind of like McSorley, uh, big thing with Spate is he lost a lot of talent last year uh, with Darbo, uh, with Jake Butt. Um, you know, they just lost so much talent that he was throwing to last year, where this year a lot of those freshmen are going to have to really step up um, Tony Gerdman, a guy that writes for our site, uh, wrote an article on Monday talking about this, um, where, you know, Michigan had four top rated recruits that came in this year, obviously headlined by Donovan, uh, people's Jones, who everyone knows five-star guy, uh, but all four are like six, four, um, you know, if they can step up and provide Wilton Spate with, uh, just, some sort of consistency out there at uh, wide receiver, the ability to make plays. I think Spate could have a really big year, um, but he's just going to have to replace those guys from last year. But I was just impressed with how he played down the stretch, battling the uh, shoulder um, injury and still be, being able to focus on those wide receivers. Uh, number five was a tough spot for me because uh, – as I kind of mentioned on what, one of the uh, comments was there's about three or four people here that are kind of like equally average. Um, so it was kind of a uh, tough decision on who I got in there. Um, this is one of those situations where you really had to look at how, how good the quarterback is moving forward and how you think he will 
make strides going into the, this season. So at number five, I uh, put uh, David Blau out of Purdue. Um, he was a three-star guy. Um, last year, threw for 3,300 plus yards and 29 touchdowns. Uh, big thing with him was he threw 21 picks last year, which is just downright horrible. Uh, led the Big Ten in picks. Um, really, the only guy close to him was Richard Legal, who I think I threw threw through uh, 15 picks. Um, everyone else that started last year for the Big Ten was kind of 10 and um, under. So um, Blau showed a lot of potential last year, uh, and a lot of those picks came really in about three games where, against Cincinnati in week two, he, he threw five picks, and then over his final three games, he threw eight uh, combined picks. So uh, really those four games, um, if you look at it, that's what, 13 – or uh, yeah, 13 picks right there. So um, I think with Jeff Brom coming in as the head coach at uh, the head coach there that I think he will kind of help blah, kind of cut down on those picks. And um, I think he's going to make some pretty good strides going forward this year. And, and we will see some pretty um, impressive numbers from him. Um, not only because Purdue throws the ball a lot more than most teams do, but because I think he's actually going to take a step forward and kind of be that pro style of quarterback that Purdue likes and that the Big Ten really doesn't have too much of. All right, Brandon, I love the list, and this is how much I love it. As we discussed a few minutes ago, uh, I saw your release on Twitter. I thought, okay, before I look at the article, I want to list my top five and compare it because we'll talk about it tonight. And I thought I would catch you on the Clayton Thorson versus Wilton Spate deal. And I thought, well, Michigan quarterback, he's going to take Spate three and drop Thorson because his numbers aren't that overwhelming. He'll drop him to four, and that's where we're going to have our disagreement. But I was wrong because I've got Clayton Thorson at three, as you do as well, and I've got the exact same top five. So I'm not going to bore everyone with the full analysis of the top five. A uh, few things that uh, jump out at me. You mentioned David Blau's struggles uh, throwing interceptions, but Jeff Brom coming to Purdue should be a great aid to him. I completely agree there. Uh, Blau actually led the nation in interceptions with 21, uh, and Richard Legault was second in the nation with 17, tied with a guy who I, I think made his mark on college football. If I remember, I don't know how. Deshaun Watson had 17 as well. He also uh, made some plays uh, positively. Uh, but David Blau, yeah, top 25 pro-style quarterback out of Texas. We'll see what he has this year. Also through the 25 touchdowns. And you would really need to break down the Purdue tape to say, okay, 21 picks. Uh, was he falling on his back half the time because the line couldn't hold it, or did six of them go through somebody's hands? Uh, again, who's watching Purdue play? Uh, Wilton Spate. Uh, Wilton Spate, yeah, I got him at number four. You went through the whole deal as I was looking to do with the left shoulder injury really hurting him down the stretch. He fought through it. He actually throws. Many people think that he throws better on the run than he does uh, from the pocket. Um but he loses, yeah, the guys that you mentioned, along with Jay Hugh Chesson. Uh, yeah, so he loses a lot of weapons there. But you, like me, are just rating these guys on, I think these are the five best, regardless of what the weapons look like. Uh, Clayton Thorson went from a freshman who led Northwestern to 10-2 and two in the regular season two years ago to a guy that had to take on more of the offensive burden and went from throwing seven TDs and nine picks that 2015 camp uh, campaign to 22 touchdowns in nine interceptions last year, up the completion percentage from 51 to 59. So I definitely think that he's on the rise as a developing quarterback. And, and as you were mentioning, not uh, being able to watch a whole lot of Northwestern football or having the desire to, I looked at the schedule to, I was thinking, I wonder how many Northwestern games I watched last year. So I, I, you know, picked through a few of them and uh, I think I pretty much saw the Wisconsin game gun to gun of course the the Ohio State game as well watched the bowl game against Pitt where they pulled off an upset as well uh, so Trace McSorley yes he's at number two so I'm going to be a little less kind than you I think he just chucks it down the field sometimes there there is a play for quarterbacks in today's game to identify this guy's a great player against an average corner, I'm going to throw a 50-50 ball, and I can do it confidently. 
Trace McSorley takes that to an extreme and losing Chris Godwin this year uh, could prove costly uh, if he doesn't um, possibly uh, factor a little bit more wisdom into his game and it cost them the Rose Bowl, possibly. It was a tie game, a uh, few seconds left. Yes. There was, it was a, not a good percentage play because it wasn't like there was a minute left where they could drive it down the field. There was like 18 seconds left and he's at his own 18 yard line or whatever it was chucks the ball down the field blindly and they lose the game i forgot uh, but, about that play <laughs> what's that i uh, forgot about that play <laughs> yeah it, it was yeah, just, you're right <laughs> it, not just the throw it was the decision considering the game circumstance that made no sense he does have deshaun hamilton coming back who's been a very uh, productive receiver at Penn State. DeAndre Tompkins provides them a little bit of what Chris Godwin did. He just uh, needs to show that he can do it game in, game out. And like you, JT Barrett's still the best in the business when it comes to Big Ten quarterbacking. And I believe he will prove that this year, coming off what people think was just an atrocious 2016, in which he was tied for the uh, MVP or the player of the year in the Big Ten. So yeah. enough people out there uh, certainly uh, saw the worth in JT Barrett's game, and he's the all-time record holder in the Big Ten for a reason. Yes, he has talent around him, but uh, yeah, I would love to see him get back to what he showed us week in, week out, uh, especially there in 2014. All right, good stuff, Brandon. Enjoy these lists. Top five in the Big Ten if you want to gain a little bit more insight, and we'll, we'll leave this as a uh, tease. Uh, also, Brandon's possible breakthrough quarterback in the Big Ten. So we won't mention him, and uh, you'll have to check out uh, his article on the Ozone.net. Uh, Ohio State Football Talk with Brandon each and every Wednesday night, and we get those videos released as quickly as possible on Mark Rogers TV on YouTube, full conversation on audio on iTunes, and also on Podbean. Uh, we'll have the videos available on the Ozone.net as well. Brandon, always appreciate the time, man. All right. Thanks for having me, Mark.